Welcome to Algorithms with Professor Kalif. Today I'd like to talk about improving on our basic quicksort algorithm. So last time we noted that quicksort has some issues. The first one is that it is in squared on sorted or reverse data. Although it's very fast in general on random data, it does have these issues and behaves as badly as our elementary sorts on some data. The second issue is the process really isn't very efficient on very small partitions. So we're going to make two improvements to our algorithm. The first one is going to be pretty simple. We're going to add cutoffs. What we mean by that is if the partition length is less than or equal to our cutoff value, we're going to just insertion sort that partition. This is going to be more efficient for us for these very small partitions. The second change we're going to make is going to be a little bit more complex. We're going to use a more sophisticated way of picking our pivot called median of three. This is going to be in several steps. The first step will be to sort the first, middle, and last elements of the partition, which we can do with just a set of if-else statements. So we're going to look and identify the first element, the first index, the last index, and the middle index. And we're going to sort them. So now we have the smallest in the first spot, the middle one in the middle spot, and the last one in that last spot. Then we're going to take the middle element and move it to the next to last spot. So we're going to swap it with the next to last element in the partition. And this element will now be the pivot. So we swap that, make it the next to last item, and identify that as our pivot. So now we're going to set up the i and j counters, but we're going to set them up so that they ignore the first and last elements because we know that the first element in the partition is smaller than or equal to the pivot because that's how we sorted them. And we know that the last element in the partition is greater than or equal to the, the pivot. So we can ignore those. They are in the right partition after the process. So we're going to set up our i and j so that we will ignore them in the partitioning process. So instead of pointing i at minus 1 here, we're going to point it at 0. And we're going to make j be 12. So it's starting at the pivot just as it did before. But the pivot is in the next to last spot of the partition. We're not the last one. Then we're just going to partition as usual. So those first three steps were our median of three process. Now that we've done that, we're just going to go ahead and do our usual partitioning process. Now in this particular array, this is going to end up looking much as it did the last time because what was the last element in our original array is the median. So we will start working through with 12 as our pivot. We'll stop at 26 the value 26 at index 4, just as we did before. J will stop at index 11. We'll swap the 6 and the 26. We'll move on. I will stop at index 6 with the value 13. J at index 10 with the value 11. We'll swap those. I will now stop at index 9 with the value 16. J will stop at index 8 with the value 3. And at this point, I and J have crossed. So we're going to swap with the pivot. And that 12 will be in place. So, so far, this doesn't look that different from what we had before. Some things are in a slightly different order than they were before. But we have mostly the same thing. However, from here, we're going to see some somewhat different behaviors. So we now do the median of 3 sorting again in the left partition. So we have the 7, 6, and 3. We're going to put those in order. And then that 6 in the middle, we're going to swap with the 5, setting it up as the pivot. 
We set up our I and J counters appropriately and we'll start going. So I will stop at one when it's looking at the eight because that's bigger than six. J will stop at index five looking at the four. We'll swap the four and the eight. Then I will move on, stop at the value 10. J will stop at the value five and we'll swap those values. Then I will move on and stop at the value 10 in index four now. And J will stop at index three with the value two. We've now crossed, so we'll set the six in place. And you can see that we've managed to divide that partition much more evenly with our median of three process. So we'll go ahead and go through that median of three process again with our left partition here. So that's going to be the three, four, and two. We sort those, swap the three with the five, set up our counters. I will stop at the five, J will stop at the two, we'll swap the five and the three, and the three is now in place. Now this time, we'll actually see the impact of also using our cutoffs. So when we get to two and three, we're just going to insertion sort that. We're not going to actually try to quick sort it. And here I'm just using cutoffs of three. Though in practice, we're going to use cutoffs that are quite a bit larger, perhaps as large as a thousand. Because insertion sorting a thousand items just doesn't take that long. Now we'll do the meaning of three sort for indices five through eight. So put those values in order, set up eight for our pivot in index seven, set up our I and J counters. I will stop when it gets to the 10 in index six. J will stop when it gets to the seven in index five. So we'll swap the 10 and the eight putting our pivot in place. Seven through eight is more than one item, so we will have to insertion sort them. That will be very fast, of course, as they're already in order, but we do have to make that check because we don't know that they're in order until we've done that insertion sort. And then we have one more partition that's bigger than our cutoff. So we're gonna do our median of three sorting process for it. So we take the 13, 19, and 26 and put them in order. We're going to put the 19, which is our median value, in place to be the pivot. At this point, of course, you'll notice that things are sorted, but we don't know that yet. So we'll set up our I and J counters. I will stop at the 19. J will stop at the value 16 in index 11. We'll end up swapping the pivot with itself because that's where it goes. And it's now in place. So our final step in quick sorting this array is going to be the insertion sort of 10 through 11 because when we try to do the right partition, we'll again only have one value, so we won't do anything. So how does this perform? We are guaranteed in log n using the median of three process for sorted or reverse data because the pivot is going to be the middle element. We will have a slight constant increase in time to select the pivot. So clearly it's a little bit more expensive to sort the three elements and swap the pivot into the place than it is to simply say, okay, this last element is the pivot or this first element is the pivot. However, that's partly compensated for by the fact that we're not going to do the comparisons with the first and last items as we're actually doing the partitioning process. So constant time increase, slight. Note that no matter what our ordering, we know for sure that we're going to have at least one item to either side of the pivot after the partitioning process is over. So even in a worst case scenario, we're not going to be back to the point where we're doing n minus one, n minus two, n minus three, n minus four comparisons. 
the cutoffs are also going to result in a slight performance increase as long as they're not too big. But as long as we keep them not overly large, somewhere below a thousand, they're generally going to help us quite a bit. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a better idea of what we might do to make quicksort always be quick. And I'll see you next time.